AM is back. So yeah, you know that. I'm sorry, I was getting the weather set up over there. That Jerry <laughs> Colangelo. Like, oh, is he gonna make it? Yeah, no, is he gonna barely. start sprinting? <laughs> he literally grew up in a box car. His mm -hmm. family in Chicago. Then he was the uh, he was an excellent athlete. He uh, basically got two scholarships. I think it was baseball and basketball. Am I giving away all your stuff, Corey? I'm sorry. <laughs> You're taking the thunder. No, but then, don't do yeah. it. So then he becomes an executive with Chicago uh -huh. Bulls, My and goodness. he came up with the idea of having a bull walk through the streets of Chicago, like pulling a cart, and he was giving out Chicago Bulls <laughs> buttons oh, or something. This is awesome. And now Corey, yeah. now he's got his own museum. Oh. It's like minor league baseball back then, but yeah, boy, in 1968, he really made a splash here in Phoenix and uh, is a great friend of the Valley, of course. And you're right, Chicago, uh, his hometown, actually uh, a neighborhood called Hungry Hill and uh, had a bunch of paper routes. He was always an ambitious kid. And Paul Coro is with us. Paul, good to Hi, see Paul. you, brother. You know something about this man and the whole sports scene here in Arizona. You've been with the Republic for many, many years and now five years. Uh, here at Grand Canyon as the senior uh, sports uh, writer and you must really l love this guy and what he has meant to Arizona. Yeah, I think this museum is a, a tribute to his life, but it's also kind of a walk through Phoenix, the history mm -hmm. of it, because so much of it involves him, whether it's building things downtown or the franchises that he brought in. It's, you know, this little baby over here became a <laughs> Phoenix icon. He's a good looking kid. And as Troy was just mentioning, although you didn't hear him, uh, had a baseball scholarship, great basketball player himself so not just an executive but he knows sports he knows what it's like to be a, a top level athlete yeah he got recruited for both sports like you said he was going to go to kansas and play with will chamberlain but then will chamberlain left before he got there so he ended up at illinois there and uh -huh. and then even this over here that his first job was with the bulls before the suns and he was a marketing guy like mid-20s and that's on Michigan Avenue, a parade yeah. float to promote the team so great. with a live bull. Troy was talking about that. It's so great. Well, let's head down this way and uh, sort of his arrival here in the Valley, a, a very young city, Phoenix uh, at the time. Uh, but boy, he made a huge splash. I love this idea of uh, here's this uh, fellow right off the plane. They're all over him uh, because he's bringing professional sports to the town that had never had him. Same equipment you're shooting with yeah. today. <laughs> yeah, the, this looks like a young Tom Fergus, actually. <laughs> that is Tom. I, I, I always did like, though, his uh, Starsky impersonation. That's I thought the, that look was always solid. But it's amazing you think back, he was a 27-year-old general manager of mm -hmm. an NBA team. And that built this road to where he is today. Like, he was doing everything back then. They didn't have the stabs that they do today. He was scouting. He wound up coaching the first mm -hmm. Suns playoff team. Uh, and speaking of building, not just building an organization, but building buildings. I mean, America West Arena and Chase Field. Uh, he's really and always has been a, a big thinker for sure. Yeah, it's been like, what, five names now? But I think we all <laughs> think of it as the Purple Palace, but that's standing there on the on the on the uh, groundwork of where they laid it. And he mm -hmm. did the same thing for Chase Field. And you think about how that revitalized downtown, just that building and what, how we became more of a real city center because of that. Yeah, and, and not only do Phoenicians love him, but uh, the NBA <laughs> really saw his value and respected him uh, and honored him many years as the executive of the year. Yeah, four-time NBA executive of the year, the only one to win it that many times with one team and everything was for a different reason. They started with that 1975-76 team that was the Suns' first NBA Finals team, ends with the, the other NBA Finals team mm -hmm. until this year. And it's amazing the joy he's brought to the city. Yeah. You know, it's such a generational franchise as compared to the other teams in town that you can see that groundswell of emotion come back in people. Yeah. Well, Paul, thank you for the tour. And uh, we'll see more as the morning rolls on here. But uh, great time. No better time, really, to swing on by Grand Canyon University. Easy to find right here on Camelback, around 33rd uh, Avenue or so. You can find a place to park and come on into the campus and uh, take a look. There's a lot to see. A lot of hardware here, for sure. And uh, a great look at a great life. We'll see you again and in a couple you know, minutes. we tried to get Jerry to come on. But, Corey, you just showed it just a second ago. That's Tom, actually. The gold medals. 
He's he still yeah, runs USA Jerry. Basketball. Yeah, so, so he's, he's still getting ready for the Olympics. Well, into what his early his eighties. Yeah, his early eighties. Yeah, wow. look at all the gold he's brought so home impressive. as an executive there. Good morning, welcome back. Thanks for joining us, Corey. He is checking out the Jerry Colangelo Museum at Grand Canyon University. You've shown us some incredible aspects of this museum so far, Corey. He's pretty impressive. It's really fun, Desiree. Well, and I know you you've got a, a history in your own family with professional sports, and you know what it means to people, uh, both professionally and the collegiate level to uh, get next to somebody that uh, they really respect and this is the place for it. We're here at GCU, Grand Canyon University. I love this uh, part of the museum. You've got this great hoop here on the backboard and uh, we're here at the Ring of Honor and uh, these are players and uh, uh, coaches that have meant so much to uh, to the Suns of course and uh, every one of them has signed this ball. Now this is, I mean, this is like the Hope Diamond. I mean, you can't really do anything with it. I would love to be. Now, nah, see this thing. <laughs> it's not even attached. I wouldn't mind dunking this ball, but it's. I don't like to show off that way. But that would be fun. Paul's still with us. It is legit ten feet, so yeah, I, it's, it's I, ready for you. I, I know. <laughs> Those were the days. Uh, we're standing in front of a great display here. Uh, nobody seems to love the valley more than this guy, and his philanthropic efforts very well known. Right, such a servant leader for the community in so many ways, and his attachment to GCU started maybe in the past decade or so. In the uh, Colangelo College of Business, took his name mm -hmm. in fourteen. This was built in two thousand and seventeen. Dr. Randy Gibb, the dean of the College of Business, basically went through for a year and a half with Colangelo in his office, in his storage units to find really? all this stuff. Trophies, medals, I photos that, that were in Tupperware, you know, and they all they accumulated it here to be this tribute to the city and, and Jerry Colangelo himself. Well, that makes sense. You know, I, uh, I, I'm sure there are some fellows who probably would already have their own museum mapped out in their minds. I like the idea that Jerry just had stuff in bins and boxes. Well, you might need this, so this might be interesting. So uh, just a, another example of his humility. Well, uh, this is such an interesting story. As far as I know, and you were telling me, only athletes get gold medals, right? right. And he's meant so much to USA Basketball. This Olympics, in fact, is his last uh, time doing it before he stepped down. Grant Hill, the ex-Suns, will take then? it over. The players thought so much and the program that they made replicas for him so that he would have, there's three Olympic gold medals in there. Before he took over the program, they lost three games in Athens with professional players and mm -hmm. didn't medal at the World Cup. And now they've won three straight gold medals and they're gonna need to add another photo down here for whatever happens in Tokyo. Yeah, well, it's gonna be a great summer. I hope that uh, everybody, uh, uh, I hope they prevail in Tokyo. It's gonna be fun. Right, they, yeah. you know, they're waiting on Devin Booker yeah. Uh, <laughs> Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, all those guys will be joining the Olympic sure. team once the finals are over. Well, quickly, tell us, when's the museum open? What's the cost to get in? It's free. Uh, it's usually open during office hours. A lot of people take campus tours in here and come through here. A lot of people on game nights at GC Arena next door will walk through here before a game to check things out. Yeah, and plus we get all the Diamondback stuff we didn't even touch on, so there's plenty to see. So it's the Jerry Colangelo Museum, you guys, at GCU. Uh, easy to find, right on Camelback, around 33rd Avenue or so. Uh, it, you'll pass an hour here, and you will love it. There's so much to see. All right, see you again soon, you guys. Wow. Yeah, Thanks, that is Corey. great. Yeah. I mean, that's that? so cool. They made replica medals for him. Oh that's yeah. So special. And he's everybody around him wow. respects him.